Hello everyone, this is a 333ml autumn beverage created in Blender. I will break down its creation process for you. This video is divided into three parts. Modeling, texturing and grease pencil. This is an improvised piece, so there may be some imperfections in the production process. Please bear with me. Let's get started. The design of this box is quite simple. I began by modeling it from a cube, adjusting its proportions to fit my aesthetic preferences. I duplicated this part of the model, scaled it down, and used it as the water inside the box. I filled in the top hole and removed diagonals to ensure it had four-sided faces. I will add loops to it later. From the beginning, I renamed each model I created because this box has three to four layers from the inside out. This way, I can easily select the corresponding model in the outliner. I added a bevel to the outermost layer of the box to make it look smoother. Next, I started working on the tree. I like to create a rough shape of the model in my mind using simple geometric shapes before diving into the details. This ensures that the basic form remains intact as I delve into finer details. I added a plane, merged four vertex together, and extruded upwards to create an edge. I added a skin modifier to create the tree trunk and then added three hemispheres to determine the distribution of the tree leaves. In the following steps, I plan to add a swaying animation to this tree, so the tree needs to be completely enclosed inside the box. I hid the other models and started adding details. Here, I used a tool created by myself, which allows me to quickly add new objects to the model's surface. I've previously made a video explaining the process of creating this tool. If you're seeing my videos for the first time, you can click on the upper right to learn more about this tool. It's important to note that this tool is not very suitable for generating a small number of models. Here's a brief overview of the principle. I use a texture where red and green control the density, and size of new objects generated on the model. I made a copy of A and painted a texture on A.001. Then I transferred the texture data to A, allowing A to generate new models on top. I'll quickly demonstrate this process. If you have similar needs and are dealing with a small number of models, adding them one by one might be a good approach. However, if you need to create many objects, my tool is quite convenient. I used a curve to create the tree trunk. And in the curve data panel, bevel it into a circular tube. If you're a beginner, the main operations for the curve tool are Alt plus S to scale down the radius and Control plus T to rotate. This process is straightforward. After creating the tree trunks, I converted them to meshes and moved the tree into a new collection. With this, the basic model is complete. To next, I'm going to add materials to the models. I'm using entirely procedural textures. Before I proceed, I've changed the filmic setting in the color management to standard to ensure that the rendering colors match the textures. I've also set the environment influence to zero because my scene doesn't require any lighting or environmental effects. I selected the outermost box and added a material. I used the Node Wrangler add-in to create a basic node setup with Control plus T, then removed two unnecessary nodes and created a color map. 
The extrude distribution is not controlled by UV, so I changed the UV to generated. In the material panel I checked back face culling, then flipped the normals of this model so that I could see the interior. I hid the water as I needed the tree as a reference to determine the scale of the procedural texture I'm using. That's all procedural textures. You can choose any procedural texture you like. In this case, I chose the brick texture and adjusted the parameters. In fact, I'm not sure what result adjusting these parameters will have. So I just tweaked them until I was satisfied. The design effect is quite random and I didn't have a concept to follow. You don't need to adjust the settings exactly as I did because different values and model sizes can greatly affect the result. I think this looks fine. Then, I added a wave texture to introduce some perturbation to make it look less regular. The purpose of the overall adjustments is not entirely clear. Overlaying multiple procedural textures can make the control of the result a bit confusing. As I mentioned, procedural nodes have a lot of randomness, which is part of their charm. Repeating the same process might produce a completely different result. I adjusted the colors and finally achieved a result that satisfied me. The materials for other models are based on this texture. I adjusted the parameters and colors for the tree leaves. I adjusted the shape of the texture to match the soft shape of the leaves. Based on the model's local space in the Z direction, I created a gradient color for the leaves to represent the sense of space. And I mixed these two result. The remaining leaves are similar, with slight value adjustments and added randomness. The trunk is also the same. Finally, I merged the entire tree model. After merging, an unexpected result occurred because the gradient color was based on the model's local space. After merging the models, the local space of individual leaves and trunks changed. But it's easy to adjust. Just select each material and adjust the gradient in the Z direction again. Next, I divided the box and added a simple noise texture. I used the same tree leaf material for the water and flipped its normals as well. I used a custom wave tool to add animation to the water. You can only see the correct result after subdividing. If you want to know more about this tool, you can click on the video on the upper right. I copied a piece of water and applied the geometry node to define a shape and determined the loop time for the animation based on it. I separated the top faces to create the water surface. Because my wave geometry node depends on the model's bounding box. Only if their bounding boxes are the same, the wave animation can be the same. So, I separated one edge from the water below and merged it with the water surface, ensuring they have the same bounding box. Their wave animation will also remain consistent. 
I reverse the normals of the water surface. Next, I adjusted the color of the material. As you can see, the higher the water surface, the brighter the material. This is due to the gradient I created in the Z direction earlier. I uncheck the back face culling for this material, so I can see the water surface from below. Then added wave animation to the tree. I added a gradient to the blue material to simulate a sky gradient effect. With this, the materials are essentially complete. However, the entire model currently feels somewhat empty. I created some grass cards using curves. Remesh them. Added materials and included a waving animation. I intend to make them sway along the surface of the box. Use lattic to bend the grass pieces along the corners of the box. The other grass underwent similar settings. and I also created a straw. I added a simple color ramp to distribute the color along the UV, creating a bright side and a dark side. Because the UV boundaries weren't in the desired position, I adjusted the UV and changed the distribution of the bright and dark sides to simulate the effect of being illuminated by a light source. The final material is for reflection. I copied the upper part of the box, added a material, unchecked back face culling, and reversed the normals because I needed it to be transparent. So, I changed the blend mode to alpha blend. The shadow mode doesn't matter since there are no lights in the scene. I added a wave texture to the background. Use this as the environment reflection. With these steps, the basic reflection is in place. Okay, that's it for the material part. The third part is the focus of this video and might address some questions about grease pencil rendering order. I've grouped the models based on an inside-out hierarchy. And I will also add grease pencil to the model from the inside out. First, I added grease pencil for the tree. It's essential to note that grease pencil cannot produce effects behind transparent objects. So, I placed the only transparent reflective object in the scene into a separate collection. Under the line art section in the collection panel, Change the include to exclude. This way, Grease Pencil can work behind it. I change the collection name to Tree. I don't need lines at the intersections, so I unchecked intersections, then adjusted the colors. Next is the water. I only need an outline, so I unchecked crease. Remember the line that was merged with the water surface? Unchecking loose will prevent it from creating grease pencil lines. Grass is relatively simple. I only need to adjust the colors. Next is grease pencil for the box. You can see that there are lines in these areas as well. To remove these lines, uncheck intersections. 
I separated the upper part of the box from this collection because this part doesn't need grease pencil. I will use edges to create a grease pencil. I copied the upper part of the model and separated it into this structural line. I used Alt-S to make it slightly wider to avoid interference with grease pencil. Add grease pencil to it. Move the grease pencil out of the collection. Otherwise, the grease pencil rendering order will be wrong. Unchecked intersections. In the same way, I added a structural line to the lower part. Finally, I added grease pencil for the straw. You'll notice that the layering is problematic at this point. The black lines should be drawn behind the white outline, but it seems to be on top of all the lines. If you only need one color of lines, you won't have this order issue. To ensure the white lines are above the straw, I need to delete the white grease pencil and add it again. Because the rendering order of grease pencil is related to the order in which it was created. This is why I grouped and created grease pencil from the inside out. At this point, you'll notice a order issue with the part of the straw outside the box. The white line appears at the front. To fix this, simply separate the part outside the box and add grease pencil last. Press C to open cut through, hold Ctrl to cut straight lines. Separate this part and put it in a new collection. Then add grease pencil to it. This ensures that the rendering order of all lines is logical when viewed from the front. However, there will be new issues when viewed from behind. Blender currently doesn't dynamically change the rendering order of grease pencil objects, which is a minor limitation of grease pencil. I hope that Blender will address this issue in the future. Next, it's time to add the details. Finally, I'll make this file available for free on Buy Me A Coffee. Okay, enjoy my video. Cheers to this box of autumn. Have a good day.